This is where I got the investigation from. So I'm going to just share this with you. These are some of the findings in the investigation too. I'm sure you have that. So I'll be sending that to the WeChat group uh, for us to make notes of important points that we need. So here is one of them. The other one is this. You also have this. So I'll be sending this to you as well. Because we didn't call it investigation three in our investigation worksheet. <clears throat> but this is the old uh, summary of everything we are trying to find out. So I was checking some of this yesterday, so I will show you maybe one of them. I think I haven't completed this particular one, but it's okay. So this, for example, I'm sure everybody will have gotten this. Uh, can everybody see this uh, worksheet submitted? Can everybody see this? Okay, good. So I'm sure everybody got this, so no need to waste time on it. So you could see clearly that, um, look at for this one, red, that's one. When it becomes two, that's the blue one, which is this. Okay, so it's it's not, it becomes uh, a kind of a narrow curve, compressed, okay, with the bigger numbers. And when this number is smaller, it becomes wider, okay? So it's more, there's a more, uh, how do I say? Uh, I'll look for a better word. And when you have positive, it's always in this form. And negative is just a reflection. Okay, there's a reflection. Positive and negative is just a reflection, which is what you, you notice here too. Compare this to the first one, you could see that they are just reflection along this line. Okay, if you reflect the first one along this line, you get these ones. And that is just a difference of negative. So negative does that. So uh, one of the conclusions that I like is this. <clears throat> But the first one I said for the curve A X cubed, what is the geometric significance of A? And I said it should comment on both signs and size of A. So the greater the absolute value, the steeper, steeper. That's what I'm trying to say the other time, being compressed or not, okay? Sometimes it looks like everything is within this space. Sometimes it looks like everything is like extended. It's like you stretching a diagram, okay? And when A is less than zero, uh, it lies within these two quadrants, as you can see that. So when A is less than zero like this, in second and fourth quadrant. And when it's greater than zero, it's here. So it's, uh, it's a flip. So one thing I might add is uh, A, the signs of A uh, are reflections, okay, for any particular curve. So when A is positive or when A is negative for the same value, you get a kind of reflection. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay. I'm sure you have written this. Anyway, so if you look at this also, okay, I'm trying to see if everybody's paying attention. Okay, Miss Karen, does that make sense so far? Okay, good. If you look at this also, so I said plot these two, so want to see the significance. So if you notice, um, for this is the red line, normal. The other one gives the blue line. So you notice some kind of translation. Hmm? This is translation. So this point, can you see my cursor? This point moves two points forward and three points upward. Can you see that? That's the point here. Okay, so basically that point is, that shape was actually translated. So the shape was actually translated, shape was translated by a vector, 
this vector is two, three this time around. Remember translation in uh, our geometry, maybe in IGCSC classes? Okay. Uh -huh. Translation is the horizontal and vertical movement of shapes. Okay. So, and the vector tells you if, you, if X part of the vector is positive, then you are moving forward, uh, you are moving towards the positive X axis. I feel like Karen is busy on her phone. You're not giving us full attention. We want your full attention, man. Thank you. So this, this vector, uh, of course, everybody remembers this. Uh, positive X means towards the right, negative, X means towards the left, positive Y means up, negative Y means down, and so on like that. So basically, this is translated by this vector. Now, the number here is the X movement. Now, if that number is negative, you will be getting X plus two instead. Okay. So if you have a vector A, X, Y, uh, A, B, then you'll be having the shape in the form maybe x minus a uh, cube plus b this is the x part of the vector not the minus so if that a happens to be a negative number then this has to be positive and that i think we can see in the next one now in this case my a is negative one can you see that in this case my a is negative one meaning it's going to move one unit towards the left and b is negative four b is everything outside it okay b is everything here okay just like here b is three in this case b is negative four so only a is the value excluding the negative okay so there's no negative in the general format basically and if you look at the picture the original one is this now look at the, the curve in blue that she has uh, sense here you see this point i'm using this center point okay where there is a turning okay i'm using this point so this point moves one unit to the left and four unit down you can see that one unit to the left and four unit down does that make sense now and that is the is because of this okay and also because this is two compared to when you had one okay Remember this comment about the greater the absolute value, the steeper the curve. Why do we say the greater the absolute value of A and not the greater the value of A? What happens in the case of negative two? Uh oh. What happens in the case of negative two is the same as the case of two. The only difference is reflection. Okay? So if you compare half, negative half, if you compare negative half to negative two, as done in the first one, look at it, negative two is the blue line, negative half is the green line, okay? It's less steeper. When something is steep, do we know what that means? Now, Lillian, can you break it down in the simpler word for something to be steep? Everybody check the Chinese version online because you need to understand these keywords. If something is steep, meaning when you say something is steeper, of course, we know steep, steeper. Uh, okay, let's see. I'll show you what I see, what I can find here. Look at it here. In terms of slope, because in this case now, that is what we're talking about. In terms of slope, flight of stairs, angle, ascent, rising or falling sharply. Okay, that's what we mean by that. So rising or falling sharply, this is all you need. This is all you need. Rising or falling sharply. So this is all you need. So let's say, for example, you have if i have this uh oh that's a very very not so cool diagram it's going to be different from having this can you see that this has a more sharp 
slow like you know when something is here and compared to when something is here this falls more sharply isn't it do you understand the point so that is what we mean by that so let's go to that picture again from the worksheet so look at the case of two look at the two you see if you draw a gradient a straight line here just a sec if you draw a straight line here to form a slope, okay, here to form a slope, the gradient of the slope will be greater, okay, than in the first one, which is the red one. Does that make sense? So this is going to have a more higher, uh, this is going to have more gra gradient. The gradient here is greater than this one. So this is steeper than this one. Does it make sense? And you could see that the blue is, so if you plot in maybe negative three, you are going to experience something similar also. Negative three will be closer again to this vertical line than this one. Why is Karen smiling? What is she smiling at? What are you smiling at? Are you chatting with someone? Are you sure I have your attention? Okay, all right. So does that does the word steeper and everything make sense to everybody? So if you look at negative two and half, two will be steeper than half. And that is the first picture that you did. Look at two, the blue line. You see, if you draw a vertical line here to find the gradient, the gradient will be greater than this one. And you see, and look at half. Half is also another one. You see, more than this one. One over three is also a smaller number. So if you start from the smallest number to the biggest number, you can see as you, as you increase the number, your gradient becomes small. So the curve becomes steeper. That's what you mean by that. Any questions, please? Okay. So that's basically what I want you to find out from the first one, okay? So we are combining all this together. This coefficient tells you how steep it is. The number inside the bracket tells you the horizontal translation, and the one outside the bracket tells you the vertical translation. Can I say that again? Or does everybody get that? Do I say that again, or does everybody get that? Say it again? Okay. Everybody got it? All right, okay, good. Okay, so we don't waste time on that. So the question I ask here is, this graph is described, okay, describe how this graph is obtained from this one. So you can see the only additional stuff is the B and the C. Okay, so basically this graph, because it says from this graph, so our from is our starting point from this graph. Okay, so this graph is actually translated by this vector which is what uh, Lillian is talking about here. Okay, Lillian, you could just use this, translated by this vector. We understand you mean both the horizontal B and vertical C. Does that make sense, Lillian? Okay, well done. Well done, well done, well done, well done. Well done. Okay, then the other one, I ask you to experiment on this. So uh, we're going to <coughs> quickly look at that together. This one's such calculator. Okay, so uh, the first one is to experiment on the one that you factorized. So let's say I pick two, x minus three, I'm just picking random stuff, x plus four. Uh, maybe x minus one. Now, now we could see how weird this looks. I'll try to extend it horizontally. We could see how we are. Oh, come on, stay here. Come on, stay there. We could see how weird that looks. Now, let's see. The, the instruction was clear. I asked you to use both signs of A. So this is one. Now let's go to another one with a different sign of A. 
Now, look at the first one, look at the second one. They have the same turning point, except that here, the first uh, optimal uh, point is maximum. Here, the uh, second one is minimum, okay? In this case, the first optimal point is minimum, the second optimal point is maximum. So when it is positive, maximum comes first. When it is negative, minimum comes first. But that, you don't have to explain in that way. Now, when it is positive, as x increases infinitely, that's the conclusion you might want to write. When x goes, when x becomes large, that is, as you move towards the positive side of x axis, y also moves towards the positive side of y axis. Can you see that? Which means the curve goes up. Does that make sense? Now, if you look at the negative case, when x becomes large, you can see y becomes towards negative infinity. When x, when x approaches positive infinity, y approaches negative infinity. Unlike the first one, the reverse is the case. Understood, everyone? So another way to remember is, with this number is positive, your maximum is the first optimal point. I'm look, I'm, when I say the first, I'm looking at it from left to right. Does that make sense, guys? I'm looking at it from left to right. So you can always, if you don't want to remember all the, when X becomes large, this and that, I will always use this to remember if I was a student, because I write from left to right. If I have positive, my first point is maximum. If I have negative, my first point is minimum. So I know the shape of the curve. So once you know that, and you know that these numbers in here tells you the results, right? Because normally we equate this to be zero. You remember that? Then we'll be getting plus three, minus four, and negative one, isn't it? So plus three will be here, minus four will be here, negative one, it's not gonna be arranged in order but you are able to figure out those points. Once you do that, the other thing would be to know the intercept. The intercept is when y is equal to zero, when x is equal to zero, right? Okay, so three things. Know the intercepts, the x and y intercept. The x intercept would be when x is zero, when everything is equal to zero. The y intercept is when x itself is zero in this uh, expression. Does that make sense, guys? And the last thing is what happens here. If it is positive, you know that you have the first one as maximum. If it is negative, you have the first one as, you know, uh, as a minimum. So for a cubic function, there will be two maximum and two minimum. So for the sake of sketching, I'm going to write uh, maybe a summary of things that we should take into consideration. Leo, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm just making sure you can hear me. Came late, we're gonna call the police on you later. Get your lawyer ready, Mr. Leon. They're getting arrested after the class. All right, so today is uh, 15th to Wednesday. I hope everything is all right, Leo. I'm talking about why you came late. Uh, I went to sleep after uh, checking my phone. Okay, so there's no problem, you only slept off. Yeah? Okay, just wanted to be sure. So cubic functions. So for we have mentioned y equals in y equals that okay. for y equals this, okay. 
But if you put that on zero, you have this. That's a less than zero. If you put that on zero, is this. And for a less than zero, you have that. The uh, reflection. Each other reflections of each other about origin. Okay, that's uh, mind my drawing. It looks messy. Also, still on the first one. So this is a part of it. So B part of that, the greater the absolute value of A, the steeper the curve. Leo, were you here when I explained? Curve steepness. Which one? Steep. The word steep. Yeah, yeah. Just wanted to be sure you didn't miss that. Okay, one thing we also mentioned here is that the curve when y equals ax cube is translated by vector c it gives the curve y equals a x minus b cube c that's another thing you have found out from your investigation, isn't it? That's another findings we have made. And of course, the A uh, steepness thing still works here. Okay. Then what we are currently talking about is this. If okay, in I think I use the word in in the form. Okay, let's say in y equals a maybe x minus b x plus b, x plus c, x plus d. In this case, uh, x equals negative b, x equals negative c, x equals negative d. Uh, the intercepts, you know that. x equals zero, y will be, when x is equal to zero, y will be a times b times c times d, right? y would be equal to a, b, c, d is y intercept. Another point is that maybe I use instead of a, b, c, so you don't get confused, I use Roman numerals, one, two, the third point we establish is that if A is negative, let's start with positive. If A is positive, first turning point is maximum.
and if a is less than zero the first turning point is minimum so what does that mean when the first turning point is maximum you have this when the first turning point is minimum you have that so this is the case when a is greater than zero this is the case when a is less than zero the cubic function only has two turning points okay cubic function only has two turning points quadratic has only one per turning point so that's what we have discovered with that particular format so another way to write it is uh, the way it was written in. So let's put that down. Another way of saying this is to say that is as x becomes large. Can you see on this side when x is becoming large? As is when x is increasing, y is increasing. Can everybody see that? When x is increasing, y is increasing. But in this case, when x is increasing, y is reducing. Do you understand what I just did? Class? Hello? Okay, please, I need response. All right, just making sure. So another way of writing, if you don't want to use this to remember, so as x increases, y also increases, y becomes large. And as and as x tends to negative infinity y also tends to negative infinity so that's so when x is going this way that's negative infinity y is going down that's also negative infinity that's what we are saying Okay. So on the other hand, in this case, as x tends to positive infinity, y tends to negative infinity. And as x tends to negative infinity, y tends to positive infinity. So here, there is a change in direction here. When one is going positive, the other goes negative. When the one is going negative, the other goes positive. But here, they follow the same direction. When one is going positive, the other goes positive. When one is going negative. So when A is greater than zero, they all follow the same direction. Understood? You can always use that to remember. And when A is less than zero, they follow opposite direction. So we can use, you know, there are ways as a student, uh, some techniques you develop yourself that make you remember how to say things. Okay, so that's that. Uh, so let's look at the next type in your, in your investigation worksheet. The next type that I ask you to experiment with, it, with is when you have one um what's it called now one square factor okay if you have a square factor let's see let's try to so i ask you to experiment type two uh experiment with graphs of type two what is the significance of the square factor all right so let's see So the square factor, so let's say two, x minus one, I'm just picking random numbers that comes to mind. That's the quadratic, then we had one more, maybe x plus one, x plus two, okay, can see that. So let's see, we have this. Uh, let's change this to maybe 
4 minus 4. Let's see, this is plus 7. Okay, so I'm going to make use of the same stuff, but with negative sign this time. Okay, about, yeah. Okay, so look at these four graphs. Everybody, look at these four graphs. So let's get rid of the negative ones first. Let's look at the positive one. So you could see that, uh, let's see. Where are the intercepts? The intercept for the green is at one and negative two, okay? At that one, there's a turning point, okay? It turns, it gives a parabola at that one, instead of crossing, okay? So like I said, cubic function, we have a maximum of two turning points, but it doesn't have to have three intercepts. In this case, you are gonna have just two intercepts because one is a repeated factor. The repeated factor, it will just turn because the moment it comes down, you know, okay, the moment it comes down, it crosses the X and goes back, it becomes three. I hope that makes sense. So let's see, for this one, the turning point is at seven. No, negative seven, as you can see here, negative seven. Okay, can we see that? Negative seven. So we could see that the square, the factor with the square is the turning point. It's where you have that quadratic parabola, is the turning point. Okay, the factor with the square is the turning point. Now I'm going to compare positive and negative of the same curve. It's just a symmetry again. Can you see that? It's a reflection. Okay, can you see the reflection once again? It's still a reflection. Hello, everybody get that? Okay. It's still a reflection, but this time around, uh, the reflection is not about the middle of this line. Okay, uh -huh. you don't need to uh, you know, assume that it's going to be like that. So basically, if you swap them around, you're going to end up getting the same thing. So it's just a reflection. And if you look at the other one as well, you can see it's just a reflection. Okay, it's just a reflection. So let's see if the same positive negative thing applies. When this is positive, the first one is still maximum. Can you see that? When this is positive, the first turning point is still maximum. Okay? And the second turning point is still minimum. So the, what we talked about for A at first still hold. That's why we are not uh, putting more importance on A this time around. Rather, our focus is on what is the effect of that square. That was why the question only talked about the effect of the square. Because A still does its job. When A is positive, you still have the turning first turning point as maximum. And when A is negative, you still have the first turning point as minimum, as you can see here. A cubic function should have one minimum and one maximum. Okay, hello, talk to me guys. Turn on your mic guys and talk to me if you understand or not. Yeah. Okay, okay, please. Respond so that I know where we are at. So A still maintains his, his role, okay? If you have the same number with negative sign and positive sign, it's still a reflection. But there's a new thing here, the square. What is the effect of the square? The effect of the square is just to um, turn without crossing. It turns at that point, it touches it like a tangent. It's not like a second now, okay? It touches it like a tangent at that point. The curve touches uh, the x-axis as a tangent. So basically, x-axis is a tangent to the curve at that point. That's what I'm trying to bring out because it touches only at that point. So let's write that uh, as part of our notes for this type of stuff. 
Okay, so I, I go to the next page maybe, or maybe I can manage to write it here. Uh, let's see if I can use this color. Red, okay, I have my use red, okay. okay. So in the case of y equals a x plus b all squared x plus c curve meets x axis at negative b and negative c only. Okay. While the curve crosses x axis at negative c, it only touches at negative b. So we can say that x axis is a tangent, right? The tangent to the curve is a tangent to the curve x equals negative b. x equals negative b. So it's going to look like this. So if you have the axis, I don't know the y axis actually, because we don't know one is positive or one is negative. So if my A is positive, the first turning point will be positive, which means it's coming from below. No, not, not exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Okay. So if I have something like this, it comes back. Yes, it's coming from below. So this is if my A is greater than zero. So the first turning point is the x-axis. If my A is less than zero, then it's coming from above. It just touches that. So this is if A is less than zero. So that's what this is talking about. So this is a tangent to the curve. Remember, a tangent touches at how many points? Class, a tangent touches at how many points? One point. One point. What is that line that touches at two points called? Seconds. Seconds, okay. Seconds. Seconds is the one that touches at two points. Okay. Okay, so let's discuss when the three cubes, the three are the same. If anyone is writing, please write fast. Okay. All right, so the next one will be when you have this. So x minus one cube is this. Okay, so basically the next one is similar to the first one. Maybe I start by explaining that. Remember what we said here. Look at this, everyone. Everyone, can you see the screen? Remember what we said in number two? Randy, you're not looking at the screen. 
what we said in number two when this is translated you get this curve right imagine what happens if the translation is just b is zero isn't that what you have in this type we're trying to investigate if the translation is b zero you end up getting a x minus b no a x minus b cube of course you don't need to say plus zero right so this type are actually the first type translated by this vector okay is that clear hello yes that, does everybody get what i mean so this is not new it's just the second type in disguise okay it's just second type in disguise so we're going to take note of that and it, it's it's clear from the graph so let's go back to the graph before we write something in the note so look at this let's write here again 2x cube uh oh 2x cube come on Okay, here we go. So let's, you know, close all this. 2x cubed is the first one. Let's put it up. This is the second one. See what happens. Because there is no vertical translation, what do you notice? It's only sliding, right? Hello? It's only sliding on the x-axis. No vertical translation. Okay, it's only sliding. Look at this. Well, okay, this is negative. Let's let's do positive first. Okay, just sliding. Uh, let's give this a different color. Give this a different color. Give this a different color. Okay, just sliding. Can you see that? just sliding because the vector is now b0 okay b0 that's the vector so there's no horizontal translation so it's exactly the same thing from the beginning okay and of course when you have negative it's just what the opposite of the positive one okay the reflection of the positive one the reason I'm mentioning this is so that we, whenever we see a curve, we already know how it was constructed. That's the whole idea of what I'm trying to do here. Okay, and that is the third type. Okay, so let's write. Let's take note of that. Uh, I call that number five observation. Um, four y equals ax plus b cube we only get a curve right which is a which is we only get a curve which is a translation which is a translation of y equals to a x cubed by vector b zero. This of y equals a x cubed slide on the x axis that's all okay so i will say c observation two okay because we already discussed this in observation number two okay that's all
So the final one, when you have a linear and the second is a quadratic that is not factorizable, okay? When you have a linear and the second is a quadratic that is not factorizable, you have a complex, not just factorizable, but you have a complex uh, root of the quadratic. That's a fourth type, because if it is not complex root, then you are going to get two values, right? Uh, I'll show you what I mean quickly. Everyone look at this. <clears throat> if you have a linear factor and a quadratic factor, sec. this is the linear, this is the quadratic. Can we see that? But the quadratic has discriminant of negative, which means there's no way you can solve it in the real uh, set. Because if this was greater than zero, if it is not a perfect square, fine, you may not be able to factorize, but we can always get decimals as the other intercept, isn't it? Okay, but in this case, you can't get anything. Brandy, does that make sense to you? Because I need some uh, acknowledgments and you know some response, even if you just to nod your head. Krista C, we're going to uh, finish soon. I just want us to discuss this observation so that when we come next time and practice, everybody's aware of what is going on. And even with this observation alone, you have done this already, don't get me wrong, but your approach to it might be different from the way I would look at it. Okay, so you are going to now combine what you have discovered with any other additional information that I'm giving you now, and that will help you in making decisions, particularly when it comes to solving the problems uh, relating to this type of uh, graph. Does that make sense? So that's the purpose of going through with everything for you again. Remember in quadratic, I didn't do this. We didn't go through all the, you did your investigation, you came up with your results. And that's because we are used to quadratic already. So there's no point wasting time on that. But cubic is different. Even power four will be different, which is the next one. And we are done with all these uh, special functions like that, like that. Okay. So again, if this was not greater than zero, imagine if this was if this was not less than zero. Imagine if this was greater than zero, you are going to end up getting maybe x minus one and maybe a quadratic like x squared plus uh, let's say five x. 25, four times, okay, let's say plus one. I can still solve this. Okay, I can still solve this because b squared minus four ac is 25 minus four. So I'm still getting square root of 21, which will be some decimals. Does that make sense now? So decimal means at least you can get two values, which means there will be two points of intersection in addition to this one. Let's see that on the graph, this particular one. Let's see it on the graph. So you can understand what I'm saying better. Okay, bye, 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 bye. We don't need you anymore. Bye, 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 bye. Okay, yes, there we go. X minus one. Then X squared. Uh oh, no. Maybe I didn't get enough sleep. Plus five X plus one. Can you see that? So there are still three points of intersection. While this is a, an integer, what do you notice about this? Some decimals that were approximated and same here. Okay, so it's possible as long as the quadratic part is not with a uh, complex, is not, uh, the nature of root is not complex. If you look at the quadratic part, and the nature of the discriminant doesn't give you a complex root form, then it means you are still dealing with this case, except, except that you are going to end up dealing with decimal. You can't factorize it in this form. You can't put it in this form. Something like x minus one, you know, maybe x minus one, x plus three, maybe x, minus even 0 0.5 or 0 0.2, whatever, okay? Here you are sure of number that doesn't need approximation. Can you see negative three, 
Yeah, the second interception. Uh, where is it? Oh, the blue cuff, sorry. Oh, look at the blue cuff. Check something out here. Can you see? I had to extend it so you can see it very well. Can you see the other intersection? Half. Okay? 0 0.5 because of the last factor. Okay? And this is one. So it's still possible. But in this case, you cannot factorize because your discriminant doesn't give you a perfect square. But if you expand this together and you form a quadratic, you still get a discriminant that gives you a perfect square. That's the point I'm trying to make. Okay? So in the last one, which is what this investigation is about, is what if you have a discriminant that isn't a perfect square? Let's change this to seven. If you change this to seven, what is the discriminant? Somebody calculate the discriminant of that quadratic format. What is the discriminant of this quadratic expression? Quickly. Uh oh. Come on, quickly, quickly, quickly. Is it negative three? Negative three. Negative three. So with that negative three, it means we only have one point that touches the x-axis. The other don't exist. Can you see that? Look, look at that. Okay, can we see this? Only one point touches at only one point, which is here. Okay, the others would never touch. Because the moment it crosses here, it means there are other values. And this is the last type that you might have. So look at this. This will be, give us what? The reflection of the other one. Can we see that? It's gonna be the reflection of the other one. Okay, so this is the last part of the investigation. And that's why I said, what, uh, what's the significance of alpha? Alpha is what? Alpha is that number in the bracket, okay? Then what is the geometric significance of the quadratic factor, which has no real zero? And what did Lillian say here? It means the graph, we only have one root and the quadratic has no, okay, yeah, has no real solution. It means the graph only touches. Oh, okay, you can't see what I'm reading, sorry. Here, I said, what is the geometric significance of alpha. Alpha the time means the only x intersects. Okay? Now what is the geometric significance of the quadratic factor? Okay? It means the graph we only have, we already said is Lillian. So I would rather we say, can anybody put it in another way based on what we have just said? Uh, the geometric significance of this quadratic factor with no real solution. Anyone? Anyone want to think of another way to put it? Karen, Verna, Callista, everybody, Krista C, Krista K, Brandy, Leo. Think of another way to put it. I'm not saying this is wrong, I accept this. That quadratic fact, yes, somebody was going to say something. Yes, Karen. The graph will only touch the x axis at one point. Say that again. The graph will only intersect. The x-axis at one point. Yeah, that's, that has been said as the significance of alpha. Alpha is that one point. So the question is, what is the geometric significance of the quadratic factor? Anyone want to try? There's no right answer or wrong answer. Let's just hear perspective quickly so that we can wrap up within the next three to five minutes. Where's the last part of the investigation? Nakita, what do you think? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Brandy? Brandy, what do you think? Um, not really sure how to say it. Yeah, just put it anyhow. Um, the quadratic Um, does not touch the graph or something. Mm -hmm. It does not touch the, the x the x axis or something. I don't know. Okay. Well, like I said, no, there's no right answer. You're all right. 
Uh, let's look at the picture that I sent to you in the group. It's on the screen now. So this is a summary. For cubic function of this, when this is happening, there is only one intercept. The graph only cuts the x intercept at this point. So that quadratic part, as far as I'm concerned, the quadratic part that doesn't have a real factor, uh, just, you know, uh, how do I say? I can say, of course, we have, we're going to have two pointing points, but that ensures there is no other, uh, there is no, that the graph doesn't cross at no other point, that the graph crosses at no other point other than what we already have. The first one, x minus alpha, alpha is a point that it crosses. I would say the quadratic uh, factor with no real solution ensures that the graph doesn't touch at any other point. Because the focus is on the quadratic factor. The focus is not on the x minus alpha part. There are two different questions. I hope that uh, that makes sense to us. Remember, the question is talking about the quadratic factor. Look at uh, this. This is, what is the geometric significance of alpha? Oh, alpha is the only point where it crosses, like she said, that's right. In this case, it is now on the quadratic factor with no real rules. Oh, this factor ensures that the graph doesn't touch at any other point other than the other one that we already have. Do you understand my point here? Okay, so I'm just going to write this uh, the, as the last part, and that is all for today. Okay, if I need to give you something from the book, I'll send it to the group. Otherwise, we'll practice it when you come next time. Okay, if you don't hear from me by maybe today or very early tomorrow morning, then maybe there's nothing to do. Quickly, six, four, y equals um, x a plus. Uh, I, I, I removed the a part. We already know the, what the significance of a, OK? a is just to either steeper curve or not steeper curve. So let's take that off. We yeah. are. Discriminants b squared minus 4ac is less than zero. The graph only touches. There is need to put something here. How about I put something like beta here? The graph only touches at x equals alpha. Okay. The quadratic factor ax squared, sorry, carry this diad, ax squared plus bx plus c ensures that the graph does not. At other so if you have this or you have this, you will end up having that. Or you could end up having that. You could also end up having the other way. So you could end up having just a sec. 
Let me see this. Something like that. So these are the four possibilities. Does this make sense, guys? Yeah? Make sense? Yes. Go through this summary that we did together. Where's Leo? What happens to your camera? I can't see you. Can you show your face at least for the last one? Okay, here you are. So these are all the possibilities that we can have. Uh, I'll send you the pictures. Make, please make sure you go through them with your experiment and everything. You've all done a great job, don't get me wrong. It's just to chip in new ideas and maybe ways you have not looked at it before. Uh, from what we have written so far, uh, please identify if you have seen something new, maybe a different perspective that you didn't look at before. Raise your hand. So this, these are some of the reasons we come together to analyze things together, all right? Because there might be something uh, that would be new that we haven't seen before, okay? All right, so we, uh, we stop here. We'll meet on Friday. Uh, I will probably send you a question from the book so you can practice on your own, okay? From your, whatever you can do. If you're not able to do, that's fine, okay? I'll see you on Friday. Yes, I'm ready. When is your next lesson? Next lesson today? No class today? Okay, if you don't have class today, raise your hand. These are the people that must go to sleep. Okay. Wait, Vena has a class? Uh-oh, Lillian, class? What, what time is your class, Vena? 3.20. 3, okay, Lillian, how about you? How about you, Lillian? Same. Same, okay, so you guys can still sleep for three hours before your class. Get some rest, okay? See you guys, bye.